Have you ever wondered what a really well built out Asana account actually looks like? My company, Minico, is an approved Asana Solutions partner. I've personally been using Asana since 2012, and you are about to see how the experts use it. Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. At Minico, we run our entire business on Asana. It's the first tool we open in the morning. It's where everyone can see their tasks. It's where we communicate with one another. We don't use any email, Slack, or Microsoft Teams. It's how we access documents and resources related to our work. It's where I can assign goals to my team, view our workload and capacity, plan content like this video. I basically consider Asana to be our virtual office. I recently did a spring clean of our Asana account. It is actually spring here in New Zealand. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how we've structured everything and what a really well built out Asana account actually looks like. To begin, let me show you how we've structured the teams and projects in our account. Firstly, we have a primary Minico team. Now to put this into context, we are a team of about 15 people. We are global and we are a remote team. So we are coordinating people across multiple time zones and we are all remote. Now this main Minico team here, this is kind of our main team where we have the internal projects that we use to manage the tasks and the operational side of our business. So you can see on this first team page, I've linked some of our main internal projects like our leadership project where we manage accounting and finance, operations for internal operational and admin tasks, and we have a content project for planning content like this video. We've also linked down here the client work. So we have a client's project and a retainer client's portfolio where we can see our ongoing retainer clients and the projects for each of those. Finally, down the bottom, we've actually linked some key resources, including our internal core values and best practices. These are some principles that I like our team to follow when working with us. I've also linked some, these are Google Docs here. These are SOPs or standard operating procedures that did detail how we work with clients, how we sell, and some of the internal operational tasks that we need to complete. So this first team overview page is sort of like a nice hub or directory where you can quickly access other internal projects and key resources. Now, along the tabs along the top here, we can view all of our work, all of the projects that we have in this team, although we mainly just link to them from the overview page. We also have a members directory. This is where we can actually see everyone on the team, where are they based, their phone numbers, their role and responsibilities, and their email addresses. And finally, we have this messages tab. This is where we can post company updates or share things internally. Because we don't use Microsoft Teams or Slack, where you could we would often post in like a Slack channel, we post internal messages in this messages area. So here's a video that I was sharing with the team last week. Um, I shared a clip about how this new voice agents feature works. It's where we share like reviews that we've had from clients, a couple of good reviews here. Happy birthday, Liam. So it's just kind of like our internal, almost like water cooler chat where we can communicate internally as a team. Now, the next team we have is this client work team. In our company, we kind of use teams almost as like folders. Now, in a bigger business, if we were a company of like 50 or 100 people, I probably wouldn't structure Asana this way. I'd most likely have teams for the actual departments of the business. I would have like a leadership team, operations team, marketing team, and so on. But being a smaller business, we, we just have the two teams, Minico for our internal work and client work for our client projects, retainer clients, and that type of thing. So we're kind of just using Teams more like folders in this case. So similar to our Minico team, it's where we can link quickly to our main client's project, our retainer client's portfolio. We also have an automation support project where support tickets come in. We link to some of our um, longstanding and new retainer projects from here as well. And the main reason for putting this work in a separate team is we just think it's sort of cleaner and more organized to have a separate client work team that keeps all of this client work separate from the main Minico team, which is more for internal planning and operations. By the way, if you'd like help with Asana, 
building out your account, setting up projects, templates, workflows, or even getting training for your team, then you can become a client in our Asana account. All you need to do is book an introductory call with us using the link in the description of this video. We'd love to meet you and to find out how we can help you to be more efficient and grow your business with Asana. Now, in terms of projects, we have four primary sort of internal projects. And I refer to these as evergreen projects because leadership, operations, content, and clients, these are ongoing. We never finish these projects. So I kind of refer to them as evergreen or business as usual projects. So one of the main ones here is our content project. This is where we plan things like videos or podcasts or blog posts that we might be working on. I default it to this calendar view, uh, but if I switch to the list view up here, we can see all the content we have scheduled coming up and just sort of ideas um, for videos that we're still planning or mulling over. So in this project, each task represents a piece of content. So this video that I'm recording right now, here's the task where I've planned the video outline and talking points. And then down here, we have the subtasks for all to manage the production, um, editing, scheduling, and publication. In this project, we have in our customized menu, a lot of task templates. So for planning an Asana video, um, we have a sort of consistent format that we like to use and subtasks that we use again and again. If you haven't used task templates in Asana, check out our recent video up here on how to use task templates. Definitely one of the most powerful features you can use in Asana. And then we also have some rules. So when we set the due date of a task, it moves it up to this scheduled section. If we complete a task, it sets the status, that kind of thing. Next up, we have our clients project. This is where we manage a lot of our work and each client or client project that we're working on is represented as a task. Because we have a lot of clients we're working with at once, we don't have individual projects for each client. We do use projects for some of our larger retainer clients, but for sort of one-off projects, we actually just manage them as tasks like this. So we have the client's name. We have some custom fields where we actually use the internal Asana time tracking to plan our estimated work and record our actual time. We can record the status of the client or the project, the value, costs associated with the project. And then down here, we manage our deliverables and all of the tasks we need to do to actually get this project done. You can see we link in the scope of work uh, or any other related documents. So when Bellina, in this case, works on this project, she can see all of the notes in here. She can see her deliverables or subtasks. She's got access to documents that are useful. And you can see we communicate internally in here. And so if I'm following up about a client, all I need to do is post a comment on the relevant task. And it keeps everything related to that client or that project tidy in one place. Now, how tasks actually get created in this project is they come in from Pipedrive via Zapier. So Pipedrive is our sales CRM. We could use Asana as a sales CRM, but Pipedrive is much more appropriate for us because it is purpose-built to be a CRM first. I much prefer Pipedrive for selling. So when we win a deal in Pipedrive, Zapier creates a new task in this project. It sets up the subtasks for us. So we have a really quick and efficient handover from sales to then actually beginning and kicking off a client project. In our client's project, again, we have a lot of rules that we use to automatically update our tasks or create subtasks for us based on the status of the project. For instance, when we complete a project, we create subtasks to email the client and ask for a review. And it's these rules that really allow us to be a lot more efficient in how we do our work. We simply update the task accordingly and the system which we've built out kind of just tells us this is what we need to do next and we never miss a critical step. And the final really cool thing we do in this project is Charmaine, our general manager, she posts a status update once a week. So when we do our internal client review every Friday as a team, she will record what we're talking about. We record which tasks or projects we've recently completed. Uh, are there any important clients to prioritize? any updates as a team to share, and she puts out AI notes uh, from the meeting here in the update as well. So this is great. We can record this snapshot in time of how we're doing, and this gets shared with the entire team. 
Now, just briefly on the final couple of projects in our Minaco team, we have an operations project, which is really where we just have random tasks we need to complete uh, if we're updating our internal tools and systems for product and service, client support, marketing and sales. It's kind of a bit of a, a dumping ground for random tasks that we need to work on for internal operations. And I also have this leadership project, which is actually just private to myself and our general manager, Charmaine, where we manage company accounting and finance. Now, a common mistake we see people make is setting up an entirely new team to keep certain bits of work private. They create a new team just for themselves and their, you know, their leadership team. Instead of creating an entirely new team though, what we've done is we've just made this leadership project private to members. So that way, just myself and our general manager are the only ones that can see this project. Uh, the rest of the Minaco team, they cannot see this unless we invite them into this project. So that's a nice little workaround rather than having to create a whole separate team. Now, in terms of communication, as I mentioned at the beginning, we don't use email, Slack, or tools like Microsoft Teams for our internal communication. We do everything through Asana. Now, most of the time, we comment on tasks, because if we are sharing feedback, asking questions, or following up with one another, usually that's related to a task that we're working on, whether it's a client, a piece of content, or an internal task. So I would say, about 80 to 90% of our communications happens inside tasks. We also use the messages feature in Asana. Now I can just send a private message to somebody through Asana. That way, instead of me sending in some communication through email and some in the comments, we can just keep everything in Asana, even if it's just private one-on-one -on -one messages. We also use the team messages area in Asana, mainly for me if I want to share a company update or say something that I want everyone to see. If you work at my company, you have to communicate through Asana. This is not an optional thing. If you start emailing me, I'm not gonna respond. We do everything through Asana. So it's, quite, it's a very strict principle that you, that you have to follow when you join my team. If you're not checking Asana, you're not gonna keep up. And the reason I've made that a policy is because if Asana is the tool where we can see all of our work, we can see everything that we're doing, the tasks have our documents, notes, everything in one place, we wanna actually keep our communication underneath those tasks. So when somebody looks at their task, they can see, what am I doing? When is it due? What's the notes? Or can I you know, quickly access the documents related to that work? And you can read the comments and the communication related to that piece of work. And this is where a tool like Asana really can make you a lot more efficient. In fact, we were at an event that Asana hosted here in Auckland last month, and they shared this amazing statistic, which is that teams that don't use a tool like Asana waste about 12 hours a week on simply finding information, switching between tools to read through their emails and Microsoft Teams, um, looking for documents, finding notes, just getting everything together before they can actually do their work. If you have Asana, if you can centralize everything in one place like this, you can really boost the efficiency of your team. Now, how we manage our bigger client projects and retainers is we have a retainer client's portfolio. Now, portfolios are essentially like a dashboard where you can view the status of multiple projects easily in one view. And check out our related video on how to get started with portfolios, which we'll link up here. And so in this portfolio, I can see each of the project owners, Bellema, Lindsay, Mahandi, Charmaine, and Warwick. And I can see the clients or projects that each of them is responsible for. We can easily see the status of those projects, how many overdue tasks we have, the percentage completion of tasks in that project. So for me, as the business owner, it's a really nice high level view, which I can quickly look at to see which projects are going well, or are there any that I need to jump into, have a look at to find out you know, why we're off track. There's a really handy feature that a lot of people don't know about actually, where if you click on any one of these statuses, like I can see this project status hasn't been updated for about three weeks, I can click on this, and then under update status, I can request a status update. This is going to create a task for Bellema in this case, and it's gonna instruct her to update the status of this project. So that's great, I can request the update. She can change the status to on track, behind, on hold, whatever she needs to, and report back to me on how the project's going. Okay, couple more things I wanna show you. 
Next up, we have a team workload view. Because we are on an enterprise subscription, we can use the universal workload feature. And if you haven't used workload before, check out this video we made recently up here. Essentially, this is where I can visualize how much estimated work is, has been scheduled or tasked to each member on my team. So we track our capacity um, using hours. So each person has certain availability during the week, which I can customize for each member of my team. And then because we put estimated time on our tasks, I can see for each person how much work they have planned, who has capacity or who is potentially over capacity or has too much work on. As a business owner, this is great because it helps us to allocate tasks to the right people, or it might even help me decide, do we need to hire another expert to increase the overall capacity of our team? And finally, we have the goals area of Asana. This is where uh, we can build a strategy map which shows the long-term vision and targets that we are trying to achieve as a company. So as a business owner, I'm trying to hand over more and more responsibility to people on my team. For example, Charmaine has a goal to improve one of our internal processes. We're looking at the help inbox right now. I've also got a goal here for myself. I'm doing some price optimization and sales strategy work. Warwick on my team has a goal to improve our retainer revenue. So this is where we can do very high level planning. I can set targets for people on my team and we can track how are we going and how are we making progress towards these goals. What's nice is Asana also has the option to link the goals to actual projects like our leadership project or this uh, price optimization project. So we can make a very clear connection between the project and the tasks that we need to work on to actually achieve that goal. And again, I'm using this more and more now as I've grown the team and I'm handing over responsibility, I am finding this goals area extremely useful. As a global remote team, Asana really is a must have tool for my business. As we're coordinating people across different time zones, we need an easy way to assign work back and forth, to see what people are working on, to communicate in one place and to centralize all of the notes and documents we need to do our work. And the reason I've been using Asana consistently since 2012 and we, we don't support clients with any other tools like Monday or ClickUp is that we really believe that Asana is the best option out there and it's the best way of working for most teams. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. And if you liked seeing behind the scenes, give this video a like. It's the best way to support this channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.